the morning. I promise I didn't ship that. <laughs> Check it out. It's gorgeous. I've had to take the microphone off so it might sound a bit tinny. Good morning ladies and gents, welcome along to the vlog up for an early start this morning. In fact, I didn't anticipate coming in this early, but I was up anyway, so I thought why not. And I've actually beat the HLT, we're only at 35 degrees centigrade, so I'm going to have to wait for an hour or so for that to climb up. Ready for me to start the brew day, but there are lots of other things for me to be getting on with. So I think what I might do while I'm here waiting is get out an undercounter chiller for this lot. So if we can pop an undercounter chiller down here, then we can keep these two cool. That one's lost its pressure overnight, but I did have to blow off the blow tie uh, open slightly. It's still got 5 psi in there or so. Hear the difference. This one's still got its 10. I don't think I screwed the lid down properly either. But anyway, let's get uh, chiller out. Let's set some STCs up. That's important. And then let's get some glycol in it and see if we can get it going. So, of course, it makes sense for us to utilize the old pilot kit brewery control board that I manufactured. But since I took that apart, as you can probably see from the inside, I've been spending quite a little bit of time harvesting components for things that may have failed outside. For instance, we've got a brewery control box here which works on the fermenters, the large ones. You can see I've taken quite a lot of the components out of there as well. And... Uh, well, we're probably going to have to reorder some of them, looking at this. So, first things first, I have to try and remember exactly how we had this all set up. And it is, if I bring you in a little bit closer, quite a mess in there. And I've taken loads of bits of relay out and wire. I think what I'll do first is, I don't need the heating control side, just the cooling. These look like main supply bus leads. They are probably, yeah, for the supply cable. Uh, so I'll take the heating cables out. We'll rejig one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got six of the base plates left for um, for the relays. I think I'm going to need a minimum of eight. I'm not sure. I need one to turn the pump on and one to activate a valve. And then we don't need the heating one. So I, I definitely need f four, eight. I need eight of them in total. So we'll have to have a dig around. I do have two in here, look, which I could probably harvest if I had to. It's not ideal but you know when you're in a pinch if I can get this operating. Mind you we've only got two fermenters at the moment so if I just get it hooked up so two work we've got enough for that and we'll see how we get on.
Well, it's been a bit of a mission, but we've got everything on the wall. So all of this is now rewired for cooling only. So that can close up. And if I turn her on, you see she illuminates nicely. And the STC's cry in unison for a thermo probe. And then over there, over here we've got the uh, control valves for cooling. I've run the cables in a little bit of flexi conduit, looks a little bit neater. We've got gas coming in up here, just need to put a little bit of a jump lead across there for that regulator. I've just got to tidy this table up and this is going to house the all-rounders. We've got feed out for the glycol and then return down to our lovely little uh, chiller down the bottom there. And that's all we need. That's all that is needed. So I think I'm just going to pull off all those elbows because I don't need to have them on there. They're kind of surplus to requirements at the minute. There we go. And then put some glycol into her. Oh my goodness. Or water maybe, but probably glycol. And then what we're going to do is pop the all-rounders up here. There we go, got them off. So I've uh, pressure tested all the lines, but you can still see some bubbles running in there. And everything works perfectly, so we've got room here for four Fernzillas with the four fermenters. And uh, it's strange actually that we've got that capacity because this morning through no fault of my own well another two um, firm sillers turned up in the post here are the uh, cooling coils for the centre if we have a look up here and the peak round the corner this is the box I've just opened for those would you believe it? Look at that. Another two Firmzillas, 60 litre. Which caught me by surprise because I'd not ordered them. Although I was contemplating, should the ones that we've already purchased work out to be exactly what we want, then I thought four would be nice because then we can, uh, we can have four brew days in a week and then Friday's always cleaning day and we can play with the pilot kit a little bit more. Anyway, I got in touch with Robert the Malt Miller and I told him the situation. I said, look, you've uh, duplicated the order pile, you've double shipped. So obviously these have a cost in returning them. So I said, knock us some dosh off, mate, and I'll, uh, I'll keep them. And that's what he did. So I'm just waiting for him to send me a link but uh, I'm going to send him the cash via PayPal. So he's happy. He's not out of pocket. He doesn't have to send a courier to come and collect these. And well, I've got money off a pair. So I think that's not too bad at all. A little bit sooner than maybe I'd have wanted to push the button on them. But hey ho, what it gives me is the opportunity to show you guys how I set up the pressure lid for the top of these. So you can move those gem if you like, the lids, because they'll just fall off love and break. So uh, the lids at the top, you need to drill these out to put the coils in, the cooling coils in. And I haven't got room for four fridges in here, so that was the way I went with it. So I might, might get that on video a little bit later. I know you've not 
seen much of the brew day today because it's been so seamless. It's been an absolute pleasure getting back in the brewery and making some beer, particularly with this floor. It's great. It just cleans down so easy. So there are one or two little bits that have lifted and uh, I've scratched, hence the feet, of course, on the mash tun. But we were going to come back and do remedials on it anyway. I think 95% of this floor is grand. So the other 5% that we need to touch up, well, c'est la vie, it's life, isn't it? Not everything's perfect straight out the bat. So I'm just about ready to transfer now. We're 27 minutes in to a hop stand and that there is the acid being recirculated around the tank. I've just changed it to recirculate into the takeoff port. I've got two minutes before I need to connect the fermenter to the boil kettle and knock out the beer. That's a technical term by the way. So I'll just give it a quick blast while you're here. So it's going in the takeoff and out the bottom port. Can you see it? In the takeoff, there, back out the bottom port to the pump, and then back in again. Here's the grain. This is what we've taken out. Three bags. I did something a little bit different today. I left the grain until the end of the day, so it's had like three hours sat in the mash tun to drain, so it's a little bit drier. A little bit easier to pack for the farmer, and it's going to go off slower. It's going to, uh, well the sheep love it when it gets high, but uh, it'd be easier for him to load onto his truck and everything else. So I think I might start doing that from now on. It wasn't really a problem didn't change the day much actually. So hopefully I'll get you to see this. Well that's went to the tank of acid. So I'll just chuck it in this bucket in case we need to use it for something later on. acid to drain out and you can hear the alarm going off. That's the whirlpool stand completed. So we'll turn that off. We're just going to disconnect this hose to make sure it's off and isolated. We don't want to be spilling beer everywhere. So this is how the hot beer recirculate through it before we start to chill the beer down. Therefore, sanitising the hose furthermore, it's also had an acid treatment before the brew day. Right, so now we'll close the base outlet and turn on under the bucket. We'll turn on the chilling water. And we're off. So we're going to transfer into the fermenter at around 2022 and then pitch some USO5, some Brewers Clarity as well, 
and set the FE temperature to 19 and a half degrees and leave it to ferment. There we go. So the transfer is still ongoing and up there, just beside that light, you see that box floating in mid-air? That's the Raspberry Pi. And I've turned that back on. So now we can start to broadcast data to our Tilt uh, Google Cloud documents. So there we have it. I think the uh, gravity is a little bit off on that. But we are filling, so it's going to be turbulent and bobbling around. So GAL 133, proof of concept. There we go. Temperature 18.3 is what we're transferring at, and data is being logged to my Google um, Gmail account. There we go. Where I can lay at home, just flick on the internet on my phone and have a look exactly how the beer is doing. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? So all I'm waiting for now is for the transfer to complete and I'm going to wash the boil kettle out, put some chemicals in there and set everything to turn on in the morning then I'm going home, it's been a long day I was out the house for half past five this morning it's five to five now so I'm ready for a bit of food and maybe a crafty beer That's extra pale malt. It's planet. The variety. Planet. Not Paris Otter or anything like that. A little bit too meaty for the bacon gesture, that kind of malt. Too much biscuit. We want something a little bit lighter in colour, hence the pale. And we want. Just a nice base to allow the mosaic to shine through. No point spending all that money on mosaic and then killing it. Well, not killing it, but certainly masking it with a really quite bready kind of uh, uh, pale malt. And then we've got wheat malt in there to give us a little bit of haze and help with the head retention as is the Clara 10. You could use Clara pills, pretty much the same thing. German wheat malt. There we go. Just need to add the water treatment, a little bit of calcium chloride, a bit of calcium sulfate, and then I'll be adding uh, some acid to the uh, HLT, a bit of AMS. Just like sulfuric acid, something else in there, can't remember what, maybe some lactic. And then, um, ready for hosing down, cleaning the boil kettle, setting the timer, having a beer. <laughs> Keep saying having a beer, don't I? Can't get it out of my head. So, before I go home, I'll treat you to one last little thing. So, I've got all the caustic in the tank, I've given it a clean. We are ready to go. And what I'm going to do is start recirculating. And let me hold it this way, it'll be easier. So we're now recirculating into the bottom of the tank, pump even. Might just have to turn this off again for it to prime a little bit. I like to have a look through the sight glass myself. So watch this. So in a 
a second that will settle down and become relatively clear. This is my uh, this is my favourite bit. So that's gone pretty clear, yeah? I think you'll all agree. Relatively clear. Right. Let's open. Close this line. And we'll open the line to the plate chiller so the beer's going to go through the plate chiller now with the caustic in it. Watch the colour. Oh yeah, baby. That's why we use caustics in our tanks. All that colour would have been... And the plate chillers had a rinse. So you think for all intents and purposes that it's clean. Guess what? It ain't. You need to caustic that baby. So we want to make sure we've got a bit of caustic in every single pipe. I like to open that. Fill this leg up up here. That's got caustic in it. And then I can close it off again. I can sit there. And then this is going through the transfer hose into the spray ball on the top of the tank, cleaning the whole of the inside of that tank. I can turn that off as well. So there we go. And then I'm going to turn this off by setting our timer. And by a miracle, we have silence. So we'll just set that again to auto. That's coming on at six in the morning, which was a bit late for me today, but I'm not gonna get up at five tomorrow, I don't think. So that will come on tomorrow. The HLT will come on. Oh, let me just check its temperature. So I played about with that today. Should be 79. Yep, 79. There we go. The HLT will come on, the HLT pump will come on, and the boil pump will come on. So when I arrive here in the morning, the tank will be clean, the water will be hot, and I'll be ready to mash in right away. And that, boys and girls, concludes Tuesday. Well, that's very good indeed. So what I want to do now is go home and have that promised well-deserved beer. Looks like we're just about to approach an 11 hour shift. Off my own back, I've not been forced to come in at that time or anything like that. In fact, I've got loads done today that I didn't anticipate getting done, including the pilot kit is ready to go. Oh, sorry, the fermentation side. Still haven't got the pilot kit out. You know what I mean. So there we go. Let's go home and crack open a beer, eh? Hello, Raj. What on earth have you got? Come here, Raj. That's a bleeding kebab skewer. Come here, buddy. Come here, sit. Raj. He's dropped it on the floor. There's a kebab skewer. I know, Chance, you little badger. Yeah. Your nutcase. Yeah, get your ball. Reggie loves his sticks. He's a big stick fan, aren't you, Reginald? In fact, you're getting quite a big boy now. I can't play with it if you don't let me pick it up. <laughs> we all know what we came for. So shout out to Martin Bailey for sorting me out with a gift. Shout out to all my patrons, thanks for sticking with me. Things are looking up aren't they? And all the subs, I think I'm over 14,000 now, that's not bad going at all. So it is to you all.
What a day.